Hello everyone and welcome to another endgame build. Today we're going to be talking about the Hunting Horn, one of my most played weapons. That's right, you might be surprised to know that I've played the Hunting Horn quite a bit. You know, I used to play it more in the past, but I slowly kind of moved over to the hammer and I think a lot of that just came down to damage. So let's sh there he is. Well, you can see that on the Xbox I've used the Hunting Horn more than the hammer, but of course, I've been using Hammer on the PlayStation and the PC as well. So if you were to add that all together, I think that the Hammer would be higher than the, the Hunting Horn at this point. I really like the changes they made to the Hunting Horn for Iceborne, but before we get into that, let's talk about the build. As you know, these are pre elatrion builds. I'm maxing both defense and offense, something that not a lot of people offer you in terms of, of builds. Not a lot of people, content creators, are working on this. I'm working on it specifically to help players who are really trying to get to the end of the game uh, and fight the toughest monsters. I'm talking about like Extreme Behemoth. When they release Extreme Elatrion, I promise you, you're going to come back here and be like, what was that build he had again? What was that? What was the trick he was using? What was he thinking about? Let's talk about the weapon. First of all, that's the Safajiva Shatterhorn. I'm a fan of it because it has Attack of Large. It has attack, uh, the, the uh, Melody Extender buff, which I'm a big fan of that as well. Uh, you can see the abilities. is the Attack Melody, Attack Increase, and Sharpness Increase. Uh, obviously, a Sharpness Increase needs to be brought up to level 5. You can actually take it up to level 6 if you want. You would lose a little bit of damage, but you would have a really large white Sharpness bar. The only reason I didn't do it here is because... I actually don't have a lot of Dracolite left on my Xbox. That's the only reason. Uh, let's take a look at the build. The basic concept of the build is that I'm building around Divine Blessing Secret. That's why you see the Golden Loon Helm, Golden Loon Mail, and Golden Loon Coil. You only need two pieces, but uh, actually the chest is just really efficient. So I take the chest as well. We have Agitator Secret, Crit Eye, Crit Boost, Weakness Exploit, and Horn Maestro as our primary damaging skills. Just another melee weapon. You could build, like, Slugger on it, but that's just not going to be very effective. Uh, you know, you would build Slugger on, like, Sticky Ammo. Don't bother building it on a Hunting Horn or even a Hammer. Why is Crit Eye only at level 5? Uh, this is an interesting subject. So sometimes people will get mad at you if you take Crit Eye to level 7 when you're running Agitator 7. And this is because, really, Agitator 7 gives you quite a lot of affinity when it's active. And so one of the things you can do is you can actually... You don't have to bring your Crit Eye all the way up. Ah, uh, but I've thought about this quite a, quite a bit. One of the reasons that I do bring Crit Eye up to level 7 is because, well, you don't always hit the monster when they're enraged. Sometimes the monster is not enraged. The other thing that happens is, your assumption is that you will be striking the monster on their uh, tenderized weak point where the weakness exploit is going to activate. In practice, this happens like maybe 60% of the time you actually hit the monster in the right spot, especially in a tricky monster, like let's say gold Raytheon, for example. She's kind of tricky. You don't always get to hit her in the exact spot you want to hit her. So when weakness exploit doesn't activate for 50%, you're actually only getting 30% from weakness exploit. And it turns out, even with Agitator active, Crit Eye still has room to grow. So sometimes when I'm trying to get my damage out, we'll, we'll still bring Crit Eye up to level 7. Uh, and that's what you could do here. You're going to notice some extra skills for defense. We have hard fire resistance. I'm a big fan of fire resistance because a lot of monsters deal fire damage. Uh, but actually, I'm just a big fan of these uh, hard elemental resist jewels. They're so efficient, you get three levels, three small decoration slots. And that is terrific for avoiding blights, but also reducing damage. So we're going to be fighting Gold Raytheon, and Hard Fire Resistance is a natural choice for defense against her. We also have Antidote. Should you actually bring Antidote? Probably not. Let me explain why. Unlike, unlike problems like Sleep and Paralysis... When you get poisoned, really all you have to do is eat like a poison item, and there's multiple poison items. There's like two of them, the dust and the pill, that are very easy to eat. They're very fast, so you really don't need antidote. But, you know, I, this is the whole point here is I'm demonstrating that you could build something like anti-paralysis, anti-sleep if you needed to, right? And you actually would consider anti-paralysis if you're fighting somebody tough like, let's say, arch-tempered master rank Kieran, who, if he was to paralyze you, uh, would actually be quite deadly and and as we all know Kieran can paralyze quite easily so this is a demonstration of where you would fit into the build what it would look like and recovery speed what the heck with the recovery speed i'm actually a fan of recovery speed i like it uh it, you, when you take a hit from a monster and divine blessing activates it cuts that damage in half and then recovery speed what's what's interesting about this skill is it takes the remaining damage that you took and it splits that in half too because it actually brings your red health bar back up to green really fast. If you haven't played around with the recovery speed, you really ought to. I think that it's uh, one of the cheaper skills that gives you a lot of health back quickly. 
All right, so you've seen the build. Let's take it out on a roll. Let's take it out on a spin. Isn't that the right term? Because you really spin the horn a lot these days. <laughs> Chef's Choice Platter. Gold Raytheon. Not my first choice of a weapon versus Gold Raytheon. You know what my first choice would be? Probably the Sticky Ammo, because she's so annoying. She just flies. Flying monsters in this game are the bane of melee weapons. You end up wanting to use Sticky Ammo all the time. Sticky Ammo, maybe like Elemental Ammo, something like that, right? Normal ammo, I guess. You would probably you probably wouldn't use Pierce on her. I don't know. I don't think you'd use Pierce. Let's jump over here. What do we have for buffs? We have nothing. Oh, <laughs> we have demon powder. All right, let's get our buffs queued up. That's the self improvement buff. This is going to be the attack up extra large buff. We're gonna get those going. Check out our attack. Hold on. Let me get this going. One, two. Check out our attack value. One five five eight. Now check this out. 1865 so important when those when the attack up extra large and the self-improvement buff end you really do just lose so much damage we'll use the demon powder too why not it'll be fun we'll, we'll pretend we're buffing our teammates even further so use the demon powder after the attack up extra large and your teammates will be turnt they'll be so strong after you use that so don't be shy use all the attack up buffs we'll run over here she should be running does she see us i don't think she sees us we're gonna drop the rock on her She's like, past the rock. I don't think so. We're going to smack her in the head. Snitches get stitches. There we go. So she's all hurt. Uh, let's go ahead and put this rock steady mantle on. And try to get a hit. Yep. It looks like we're getting a move on her. Very good. Try to hit her again. She's all mad. We're going to go ahead and grab her by the head again. So our goal is, oh no, okay, this is still going to work. Our job is to enrage her now. We want to enrage her because the moment she becomes enraged, we're going to be able to get the agitator to activate. Okay, smacking her in the head. So this is a really great part of the fight because it's very easy because we're tossing her into walls and everything. Is she KO'd? Yeah, she's KO'd. Do a pommel thrust into another note four. Perfect. We want to get as much damage on her while Rocksteady is active as well. And none of that landed. <laughs> and that is the nature of fighting a flying monster. It's so annoying, dude. You just can't reach her head. I should probably soften her legs. I think I should soften the legs. I'm, j I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to think about it. Softening is never a bad thing, guys. When you soften a monster, you're helping the team, right? Gotta be a team player, especially if you're using Hunting Horn. Time to be a team player. Alright, so her legs tend to hang down. Her head does not. Look at poor Kitty. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was smart. I think we're gonna keep her legs softened because when she's flying like that, she, you know, she's enraged and we can't really... I guess we could... Oh, can we... Yeah, we can. So you can actually roll out of that. Let's go ahead and get this opportunity to get the uh, retenderizer on the head. Perfect. She's all angry. We don't mind. That's a flinch. Note 4, note 4, note 4, note 4. All day, every day. All day, every day. Note 4. I ain't scared of you. I got my baby blanket on. I think we're tearing up that leg really well, too. Oh my god. Woo! Sometimes you just need to dodge everything. It's easy. You don't need defense, guys. <laughs> guys, you don't need defense. You're a speedrunner. Just keep the monster juggled 100% of the time. Easy mode. Duh. Duh. Haven't you tried that? God. Bad player alert. <laughs> Alright, let's climb up the ledge. Set up our trap. <laughs> running away. Is she gonna land? Oh, she is gonna land. Shoot, shoot, shoot. We gotta get over. <laughs> Hold on. Gotta take advantage of that. Wow, none of that landed. That sucked. Oh, that's my cat putting her to sleep. Ah, that sucked. Don't do it. I, I warn you, I'm an expert at climbing things. You know we're gonna get a we're gonna get a grab guys so this is the tough part this is really where the hammer just dominates the hunting horn it's like 
Oh, what happened? She got she got knocked out. Oh, she's drooling. Grab her by the head, quick. We're gonna use this opportunity to soften, and then we're gonna probably go for a wall smack bounce thing. What's she gonna do? Oh my god, the running attack is the absolute worst thing in the world. Look at you can't you can't avoid it, and then she's gonna KO you in like a second. Cheap move, man. Dude, I'm gonna be so KO'd. There I am, I'm KO'd. Oh, I'm still alive. Let's get a heal in. One minute till the... Oh my god. Dear lord. We want to throw her into a wall, but she's... Oh, she's flinched. The stupid claw missed. Why is she so annoying, man? Don't, 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 don't. Oh... The cat's being a boss, at least. The cat's doing work. That's not going to do anything. Oh, my God. Agitator activated. Well, you know what? Screw this game. So, watch this. We're up on this ledge. Watch us get an easy sharpen because we're up on this ledge. She's not even going to get close. Well, she's not even going for us. She's going for the cat. But let's say she was going for us. She'd have to climb up here first. And now nothing on her body is... Oh my god. Nothing on her body is softened. It's a sad day. It's a sad day because we're not going to do any damage to her. Ooh, Slinger Bombs. She must be getting hurt, man. I think we're ready for the grab. Are you guys ready to grab her? I'm ready to grab her. I'm ready to grab her by the tail. Come on, Gold Raytheon. What are you doing over there? Do you think we could kill her with a cannonball? How, how boss would that be if we got the kill with the cannonball? Oh my god, waste of time. Ah, this would be so easy with the hammer. <gasps> that was a snipe! Did you see her shoot me out of the air? That was crazy. Alright, 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 alright. I do respect that, but we do have to finish this fight. That was amazing. Alright, and there's the grab. We're going to use the uh, pods to shorten the duration of the grab. That was some pro snipes right there, man. Straight up, that was... She 100% sniped me out of the air. How is she still running? God. What? How do mounting mechanics even work? The hell? Alright. So much for shortening the uh, duration or whatever the hell I was saying. <laughs> so attack up extra large gone? Yeah, it is. Darn. Oh, she didn't actually hit us there. Weird. Oh, I was hoping she would get close but not actually strike us. You know what? I bet you we can finish this. Let's finish this. No, we're not finishing it yet. Weird. Let's go for the impact echo wave. So we're missing a bunch of health. Not a bunch of health. We're missing a bunch of damage because we do not have the attack up extra large buff. But maybe we can finish the fight just by missing attack up extra large. Maybe not. Ho, ho, ho! Knocking her out of the air, man. She's drooling. Look at this. And she's gone. All right. It's tempting to reset the attack up extra large buff, but uh, we didn't actually need to. We were quite close to ending the fight. Quite close to ending the fight, guys. And that's the hunting horn in a nutshell. You know, it's still really, it does just feel a little slower than something like the long sword, the gray sword, the, the hammer. Uh, the note four is a lot of fun, but you know what else is a lot of fun? Doing as much damage as its peers. That would be really fun as well. And I feel that with a weapon like the Hunting Horn, you do the extra work of having to maintain something like the self-improvement buff and the attack of extra large buff, and yet you find yourself doing less damage. And I think that this is probably what contributes most to the Hunting Horn not ranking well in the weapon popularity. It's actually not as complicated as a weapon like the Charge Blade, and yet we see the Charge Blade ranking fairly close to the middle, if not the upper half, of the list when it comes to weapon popularity. So how do you explain... You can't just say that the Hunting Horn is too complicated and that's why people don't use it. I don't think that's it. I think people actually just get tired of having to maintain attack up extra large, and there's less variety with the Hunting Horn than it appears at first, because once you learn that there's a sort of like attack up extra large meta, it really pigeonholes what you're going to be doing with the Hunting Horn. You're just going to be using it like a hammer, but you're also going to be using attack up extra large all the time. So they really could still improve the, the Hunting Horn, I think, 
Uh, but they've taken it in a really good direction with Note 4. Uh, but that's some commentary on how I feel about the horn right now. You've seen the build. Some of the nice things about using Hunting Horn against, let's say, a Latreon is you could really get the damage up on your team, especially if you're doing what I, I showed. Where you, I don't know if I showed this. You can you can use Attack of Extra Large, and then you can use a Demon Powder, and this would just give the team a really large damage boost, especially on a team of four people. So if you're fighting a Latreon, there's probably a good chance. See, I don't know what he's going to be like, but there's probably a good chance he's a four-person fight. So if he's if he's like Behemoth, if he's one of those already scaled up monsters and he's a four person fight, getting that attack up extra large out for the whole team could actually contribute a lot, especially if you're a really solid hunting horn player who's doing their own damage, uh, you know, uh, at a good rate as well. So good luck out there. I hope you can appreciate the build. If it's too much defense for you, bring in Master's Touch. There, you know, I could if you wanted, I could do a second series where we just do full attack builds uh, if you guys wanted to because I'm, I'm familiar with those as well but the reason we're working on divine blessing secret builds and 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 mixed builds is because very few places actually distribute information on how to get a good defensive setup going uh, that includes lots of damage and that's my whole goal here is to educate you guys on what a good mixed build would look like that's going to be the end for the hunting horn i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time